Today's episode is brought to you by the Future Bastion Meta. Drop the beat! Welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I am your host, The Blevins, and with me, as always, is Deathblow. What's up, buddy? Not too much. How's it going? It is going well. Going well. Whew. Season three is over. I can I can leave that one behind. Yes, I'm ready to even, start the grind of season four. Why did you talk about season three? <laughs> what did you uh what what did you finish out at? What was your uh uh, 2901, but my peak was 2956, like, I don't know, two hours before I had to stop playing for the night. Rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip, 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 rip. But at least it wasn't uh, 2499 like it was for me. Um, that's true. Except I did end up pushing back, but it was like three days later. <laughs> Um, but enough dwelling on season three. Season four is what we have in store for the rest of however long it is. I don't know how long. I don't even know how long season three was. What three, four months, two months? Uh, I think it's about three. I think it's going to be quarters of the year. So I'm expecting three months. That makes sense. But uh, overall, it was a pretty good season. I'm I'm looking forward to season four though. But let us move right along uh, with a little bit of housekeeping. We did Deathblow. We got a new iTunes review. We did, yes. Uh, it is a five-star review from Ooh. Say Jackson. It says, great show. I've been listening since launch, and I actually went back and listened to all the episodes from the beginning. Shout out, Only Watch. Great podcast. <laughs> the guys are really funny and have a great relationship, even though they always talk about cutting them down. Uh, I love the tangents. Uh, if you want a great competitive podcast that's not afraid to to not take itself too seriously I, i'm pro- i'm butchering this i have to be uh then you found <laughs> your match so thank you so much say jackson sorry that i could not read today while i was i'm playing. sorry say jackson woo i cannot read <laughs> had to do it um <laughs> has extra read is read is my last name um Jim. So, yeah, there's a whole rap about this that we don't, that we don't need to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, but, yeah, so thank you very much for your review. Appreciate it. Anybody else who wants to support the show, that is the number one way that you can do so is by leaving a review, five stars or otherwise. So oh, let's not even thank talk you. about that. Let's not even talk about that old review. No, but seriously, uh, leave a review, guys, uh, as long as it's a five-star review. Uh, <laughs> I remember, like, way back in the beginning, Phelan was like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, nope. Bring it on iTunes. I, I couldn't care less. Your your service is awful, so I'm going to I die. think it. I think it's me that's opposed to it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Rate us whatever you believe us to be. I don't want to. If I mean, if somebody can't bring themselves to leave a five-star review, I prefer they leave a four-star review because I do think that's better for us than them not leaving a review. So yes. uh, as long as it's not like two stars, then that's where I draw the line. You get out of here with your two star reviews. Bring on all the one star reviews though. No, <laughs> you know what? Just, just rate us fairly. Yes. Oh wait, no, no, don't wait. Never mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> rate us fairly, but not comparing us to any other podcast that may have. Or existed. just anything else in general. Right. Um, but <laughs> let's move uh, right along to what did we do last week? Death did it do anything fun and exciting interesting no really. I've had an overwatch week because there's been so much to watch from the carbon series Ooh. that was starting Ooh. as we were recording a week ago today yep. pretty much straight through i did fail it at my my diamond push at the end of the season but hopefully starting this season with my team instead of losing 400 rank points towards the end of the season uh to tryouts will hopefully help me get <laughs> back there and, and hopefully make that master's push i, I want to make um, I do think this group can can definitely do it that I found. We, we're replacing a DPS character, but we've got a lot of really good options. Uh, so I, I expect us to, to hammer that out this week and be ready to go for the new season. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said before, I'm really pumped for season four. I've got a couple of friends who, myself included, kind of dropped off near the end of the season. My whole goal was to get to plat 
from silver, started at silver or yeah, no, I started at silver, made it to plat, which felt pretty good. Um, and then I just kind of lost all like desire to play. Like it was, I, I probably could have, cause one of my friends did go, uh, he started at, at low gold, um, a few hundred points ahead of where I started, but he made it up to diamond, um, and was actually pretty close to masters. I think he made it to 3,300, uh, so I could have kept pushing with him, but I just uh, too busy slash was doing other things as well. Um, I've been playing a lot of Clash Royale, and I bl- I a hundred percent blame <laughs> Devin Nash from CLG. <laughs> it literally, we were taught we talked about it on the podcast. I'm like, you know what, you know what, I forgot how much I love Clash Royale. And now I think if I went to the doctors tomorrow, I would get clinically diagnosed with uh, addiction to Clash Royale. Um, but I know I have a problem. I just choose to embrace the fact that I have a problem <laughs> and not do anything to stop it. <laughs> it's only a problem if you're bad at it. Okay, it is definitely a problem. Then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I've also been playing. Um, I've been playing Vain Glory more as well. Uh, talked a little bit about it. It's a mobile MOBA. It's pretty good. A lot of support. Uh, pr- really like nicely polished game. I also started playing H one Z one, which I thought was really kind of clunky and bad the first like four runs I did. But then once you get a hold of it, it's actually really fun to play, and it's also really fun to watch as well. Um, I actually want to start um, watching some of the like competitive games because uh, uh, H1Z1 King of the Hill is actually played uh, in an, in an esports capacity. Um, it's obviously not as big as uh, Overwatch, but there are some some pretty big tournaments. Um, so I'm going to start doing that. Just you know, watch kind of casually. It, it's a really like it 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 has built in tension. So there's like every game is like very intense at the end uh like by default so it's just like naturally a really fun experience to watch so um yeah so maybe maybe you'll see the uh h1z1 podcast uh i doubt it and i i say i'm going to do a podcast for every game i've ever played yeah. um and it's only know, it's only <laughs> mostly true <laughs> i i like i'm just saying death the second you're like, hey, so I kind of have an itch to do the Clash Royale podcast, I will 100% just go all in immediately. Um, Good to know. Just, uh, just so you know. <laughs> um, so <laughs> let's move on uh, to what did you guys do last week. And uh, I'm going to move right into the, the meme of the week. We've got... Uh, it's not. It's not. So it's not an actual meme, but it's very, uh, very meme-ish, meme-centric. It's a real life meme. It's a it's real life the meme, meme in real life. Done, done by our, our, our great dev and uh, our overlord, our overlord Jeff Kaplan, at the Dice Awards. And uh, well, I actually have the clip ready, so um, let's uh, let's take a listen. Thank you, everybody who made this happen, everybody in the Academy, all of our fans, and especially we want to dedicate this to all the Hanzo mains out there. Thank you, everybody. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Jeff Kaplan, uh, you know, when they when Overwatch won the DICE Awards for Best Game, I think that was the award they got. I don't know. It's like a thousand years after award season. Um, after they won, <laughs> Jeff Kaplan dedicated the win to Hanzo mains. Um this is the same person who the last time they got an award uh, gave a shout out to the Overwatch uh, subreddit and said, and I quote, keep him out for Harambe. So uh, literal meme lord uh, Jeff Kaplan at work again. Uh, definitely, definitely amazing. Um, but let us move right along. Uh, we talked last week about how this week was going to be a tournament heavy week so let's move right into it's tournament talk yes let's talk about 
some of those tournaments. We've got a couple of updates uh, for some series as well as an actual full tournament that happened. Um, let us start with the uh, world record holder for longest tournament series ever, the Apex event. <laughs> um, so we're finally, finally, after what seems like 10 years, done with the group stage of Apex. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Meta Athena, Envious, Lunatic High, and Luxury Watch Blue uh, in the top four um, for that event. I believe that's the that's the playoffs. Is that is that all of them? I think so. Yeah, the top two from each. Or no, what's the top two? Top two, two from all four groups, from, I believe. Okay, so I'm missing four of them. Um, uh, I've got it right in front of me. Okay, so awesome. top of group A is Meta Athena and Envy. We also have Lunatic High and Luxury Watch Blue. Uh, Kong Du, Para, and Runaway are first and second in their group. That leaves Fnatic on the outside looking in. Uh, they'll also... Kongdu, Uncia, and Cloud9 are on top of Group C. So, of the NAEU teams, Misfits and Fnatic don't appear as though they're going to make it in. I'm not 100% sure that all eight teams do advance. Um, there's only four teams that are highlighted, but they're yeah. only in Groups A and B. So, I'm left to assume that that's the, the mistake here. And, mm-hmm. um yeah, that we will have uh, two from every single one of these groups. I think that is the best, um, the best bet. Yeah, I think that I'm pretty sure that's what happened last time. Uh, and then they had that uh, that like I don't know what you call it the draft to choose like what the first round matchups are. Like seed one gets to choose who they want to play, and that was the whole thing where uh, Rogue picked Envious and uh, that whole um, well old Rogue picked Envious in that whole. Uh, that whole mishap happened. Oh, not mishap. The whole controversy happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, we we might actually. I'm sorry, we are not completely done with the group stages. Uh, tonight we have Cloud Nine versus uh, Kongdu, Uncia, and Fnatic versus Runaway. So this oh. these are not locked up yet. So we actually uh, have some winning ends then, probably. Yes, yeah. So oh, that's it awesome. looks like. Fnatic would have the opportunity to, yeah, because Runaway is the team that that's ahead of them. Yeah. So uh, Fnatic is playing against Runaway for a spot in the finals, and we also have in the Cloud Nine. Uh, correct. Cloud Nine needs to pick up just one point here. It looks like they're currently sitting above Africa Freaks Blue without mm-hmm. even having played the number one team yet. So we will have to wait and see, but. Um, it could potentially just be a log jam at 102 hmm. um, in that that group. So uh, it's weird to look at, but I think Cloud9 is all but locked up there. Uh, I don't know that it, it would be very difficult for them not to make it at this point, considering they're currently sitting in second place. But who knows? They're in the tournament rules, it might say they have to play a tiebreaker. So, mm. you know, they, they might roll another round of Swiss, God forbid. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there there could be a lot of different options there. So let's hope Cloud9 is just able to go ahead and pick up a point and secure their spot in the finals or in the uh, yeah the playoffs. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, now it makes sense. The highlighted teams are done. They're locked. The other yes. top teams. There's still another. There's still another half a round of Swiss to go. Awesome. Um, but so only misfits for the EUNA transfers are, are confirmed. Rip. Yeah, that that's uh, interesting. But uh, yeah, so definitely rooting for Cloud Nine. Definitely rooting for Fnatic. Um, you know, go go NA slash EU. Um, and yeah, it it, it it you know, I'll say what I what what I will about the Apex tournament. It's gone on forever. Um, it's on at like a zillion o'clock in the morning. Uh, but I, I'm honestly quite excited for these playoffs. It's going to be the best teams in the world playing in the playoffs. And it has a little bit of the, uh, actual, um, you know, relevance of the matches mattering right now. Not, uh, okay, we'll, we'll see the effects of this win or loss in like 10,000 years, uh, It'll definitely be nice um, to actually watch these uh, 
of these playoffs as they're happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. And for, so far the action we've had in them, I, I've, I, when there's a great match and I'm told there's a really good match, yeah. something I need to see, that's when I watch it. I don't mm-hmm. want to watch all of it, but I just watched a few of these matches so far because they've been really good. And mm-hmm. the one I want to highlight, and it it's, might come as a shock to you guys, but Meta Athena dismantled yeah. Envious. I mean, not close. You Watching the game, you could see that there was still the mechanical skill advantage, I thought, was a little bit in favor of envious uh you just had i mean maybe not across the board you know every single player on their roster but you had saya player versus taimu going against each other on mm-hmm. widowmaker for a really big portion of that uh that series mm-hmm. and i thought taimu repeatedly came out on the better end of that um Who there was some <laughs> right yeah there and there was some hero changes forced at times but generally speaking I, you know i thought they had some really good games on, on the guys on their roster but meta athena and, and i guess they're on like an almost envious win streak going it's like 18 and 0 or something like that i think i heard them saying in the mm. commentary uh it's through two full events they haven't they haven't lost yet and now this being the third and this being on a much bigger stage than the previous two were it's yeah. really legitimizing them and just seeing their their teamwork their cohesion the way they moved as a group and mm-hmm. everything about their play was really really impressive so a really important team i think to watch out for yeah. as undoubtedly i mean maybe not at every land maybe not on land or anything like but undoubtedly the best team for going into an alienware monthly melee has been envious so the fact that anybody could just 3-0 them in in i mean they weren't blowout games but it was a 3-0 like they you know they bullied them around they did what they wanted to do and it worked for them the entire way so it was really impressive to see and definitely somebody to watch out for yeah and you know we've we've talked about this a lot uh over the you know the the life of the podcast but it's like you can have these dominant players you can have you can be winning every one versus one matchup against your uh, respective opponent but that doesn't matter in overwatch it's all about the team cohesion and the uh, coordination with your team and the i think the i i I, death and i were talking about this match earlier today uh over uh facebook chat and uh, the the line that I either uh, I think Doa said was um, you know uh, Mickey just died there. Looks like they were lacking the the lacking the communication. Like you know Mickey goes and throws a Zarya alt on um, Sparta map of Ilios. Throws a Zarya ultimate where like none of his team is even close to him. Just throws the alt away. Mickey dies. His team, uh, Envious, just trickles in afterwards, and they just get picked off one by one. It was like watching me play. Like, <laughs> like you know, it, it, it makes a little bit of sense. Like, Mickey does – English is not Mickey's first uh, language. I Actually, most of them, English is not their first language, but I'm guessing that it's their common language. So mm-hmm. I, I have to imagine that has uh, something to do with, you know, the – uh, the miscommunication because you know they've been playing together for quite some time now even with mickey envious themselves have been playing a lot but like you know when you have your zarya player who is a linchpin of a lot of these comps you know whether they're contributing the most or not is is a different story but the, the you know the plays are set around the zarya grabs and the and the bubbles and if you can't communicate um effectively in a very very timely manner at that level like you just get exposed by these players who are all on the same level they're all speaking the same language they're all uh able to react to the call outs instantly um you know that split second of like instead of instead of hearing what is is said and then in your mind that little bit of time it takes to translate that in your head if you can just get it as a split second and just know uh what what's being said to you instantly that's got to be, you know, that's got to be different and compound that over the course of an entire match many, many times in a, in a, in a game like that. It's just, it ends up being, um, you know, extremely exposable. And we saw that in this, in this envious versus, uh, uh, meta Athena match. Yeah. And I, I do think it's unclear whether or not it's going to be a long-term problem or if it is, uh, you know, a, a communication problem to that level, mm-hmm. it could have just been as simple as, you know, Mickey got a little tunnel vision and, and sure. some points and, and you know that that happens to the best of us mm-hmm. um, 
I know from my my efforts trying to learn to shot call, you know, both recently and in the past, it's it's really easy for especially when things aren't going well mm-hmm. for it to just snowball and these little things that you know actually aren't little things, but it just comes down to like processing the call from the shot or five seconds too late and you hit the cue button and you just you go oh wait what did he say and you know and it's the littlest small you know tiniest details and the, the tiniest lapses in judgment and processing matter so much at this level and, and it makes it stand out a lot when only one side afflicted by that at, the, at any given time yeah it'll uh it'll definitely be it'll definitely be um interesting to see because you know mickey has you know mickey's breakout performance you know his first performance with envious uh was just spectacular uh on the diva and it was like oh man envious has this dedicated diva player that's kind of interesting because diva wasn't super into the in the meta at the time then diva became entirely meta and now diva's kind of more of a uh a niche pick so you know Mickey on Zarya is not the same as Mickey on Diva, and you know you, you could almost make the argument that there are better Zarya players. I mean, you could definitely make the argument that there are better Zarya players than than Mickey is at Zarya. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see if you know moving forward if if that sort of you know lack of communication and and inability to perform under you know these high level uh, situations like if that's going to affect uh, Envious and if they're going to you know make changes or not. So. Definitely be interesting to see. Um, you know, I definitely want to. You know, I, I, you know, I, I root for Envious from time to time. Uh, not when they're playing against any of my teams, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're impressive to watch. So it's really mm-hmm. easy to root for them. Um, it's just all for the most part, anyways. Uh, and they they just the gold standard. You know, they, mm-hmm. what you should what should you be doing? Who should I be taking my cues from? And and trying to emulate in my play, it's always the best in the game. It's always and so. And Harry as Potter. long as they're the favorites, <laughs> right? And as long as they're the favorites for that conversation of who's the best character or team or mm-hmm. anything like that, like that's that's who you're gonna look at. So they're yep. they're always one to watch. Yeah, I mean, even if even if it were just for Harry Hook on uh, McCree and Taimu on Widowmaker, like that that alone is worth uh, watching. Envious, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely going to be you know actually interested to, to see the conclusion of this. And one thing I want to note because you know I've I've talked so much smack about the Apex tournament, um, but in in all honesty, like. From a production value standpoint, uh, it's probably the best uh, event out there. Like the just the effects that go on during the match, the cuts, the casters, the graphics, the extra like replays and stuff. Like it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, maybe E League was like comparable, but but honestly, like on a consistent basis, like the OGN knows what they're doing. Uh, yeah, I haven't really noticed or experienced any slip ups whatsoever. No, uh, with anything I've seen from from the Apex series, so you know, props to them for that. And if you're one of the Twitch chat people that you know NA production and you know all these things <laughs> you want to like, complain about, like every tiny little thing, um, then this is an event for you because I don't think you'll have anything to complain about. I just hope you work an overnight. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah, you'll never you'll never have anything to complain about, and even if you did, it would be made up by singing McCree. Yes. <laughs> but uh, let's move along. Uh, we've got the Carbon series, which is slowly becoming one of my favorite uh, events out there. Um, I'm gonna real quick run through uh, what we've got so far. Um, at the top, we've got Renegades at two and zero, Hammers at two and zero, LG at one and one immortals at one and one and then both complexity and liquid at uh, O and two so uh not uh not a ton of surprises here i think um you know it, you know normally seeing complexity at O and two or liquid at O and two well eh, maybe not liquid but uh seeing complexity at O and two in a tournament is kind of surprising but you know this is a, a small small pool very good na teams here so 
Um, they are in the middle of some significant roster shakeups too. And yeah. curiously enough, in the the Alienware event, we actually saw them take down some pretty decent teams. Mm-hmm. So they're actually looking to replace. It looks like both of their tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, as yesterday, they were rolling with Bishu and Decop uh, in their their tanks. Decop is a, a Reinhardt name that that should be relatively familiar to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, Bishu a little bit less so, but he's he's been around. He's definitely not a rookie. Yeah. Uh, by any stretch either so uh, and they seem to level up you know i'm i'm got my uh carbon series uh results in front of me i don't have the alienware in front of me so i can't remember exactly who it was they beat um but we'll get there soon i don't i just don't want to spoil it yeah um but yeah if you guys are uh watching live the i believe the matches are either going on right now or they're starting soon and they'll be playing. 40 minutes yeah, in 40 minutes. So, um, Monday, Tuesday, is it, it's Monday, Tuesday, or is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that they play? Monday through Wednesday for the group stages. And then, uh, the playoffs will be over two days and there will be four teams, double limbs. So cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if you're listening to this in podcast world, um, on release day, you'll be able to see a couple of matches, uh, tonight. So, <clears throat> Definitely a cool series. We will keep you guys updated with that. Um, but the last tournament we wanted to talk about was the Alienware uh, Monthly Melee. And uh, real quick, the results. Um, we saw in the top four, we saw Rogue, Hammers, Immortals, and Complexity. And uh, we saw Rogue and Hammers in the finals. But Rogue ended up taking out um, Hammers Esports 3-1 to one in the finals. So... Definitely, definitely an interesting little match, um, or an interesting uh, little tournament for sure. Uh, a lot of um, big name teams um, that aren't in Korea in here, uh, notably the return of Rogue, which was um, you know they've been on hiatus for quite some time now. Uh, yeah, they had their move from uh, from France, I believe, to. Mm-hmm. Vegas, Las Vegas. Yep. So definitely very, very excited to see them back in tournament action and could not have gone better for them. I, yeah. I think they were by far, I mean, the won the tournament, but they were <laughs> throughout it. I mean, there's been times the winner of the tournament wasn't the standout, you know, yeah. like you're watching some new up and coming. This was the rogue show. They dropped one map the entire time that was in the finals to hammers esports who did seem to finally find a way to get under their skin. But, um, much to my chagrin, we still have the one map, um, granted to the winner of the, uh, winner's bracket. So, mm. Rogue went into that match up 1-0 mm-hmm. before they played at all. But nonetheless, I mean, there was just some incredible play going on. I, Knox, just out of nowhere, not known for his Winston, mm-hmm. pretty much like solo tanked for them huh. in this in this event. And they played nothing but dive comp, and everybody played almost nothing but dive comp, almost the entire tournament. Hammers Esports was talked about as a team that was only good because of the quad tank meta and all mm-hmm. the other reasons people make up to excuse their <laughs> losses. And, you know, you look at what they were able to do playing zero tanks was mm-hmm. incredibly impressive that yes that was a thing in this tournament i think we saw it a little bit uh mm-hmm. last week too there was some some really light tank compositions but it was really highlighted by i mean almost almost all the time there was a winston um in almost every single lineup it felt like throughout the course of the event unless uh, somebody was playing quad tank and then mm-hmm. he was the odd man out but um yeah i mean unco was Splitting time, I mean, he seemed basically to just want to play Zenyatta mm-hmm. almost the entire time throughout the tournament. But when they were, when he was forced off of it, when they needed to, he would switch to Anna. So that what seemed to be what he wanted to do. Obviously, Wins was just always playing the Lucio the entire time. Soon was the best tracer in the tournament. I believe it was very, very close, at least. Um, Nico has... Shout out Melty Esports, Beta 1. Uh, yes. He, he really, I've never seen him look as good as he looked in this tournament. His Genji play of the games were everywhere to the point where Hex and ZP were haunted by the pumpkins that they were carving up at the end of every <laughs> single match. 
And yeah, I mean, it was just all, all in all across the board. Uh, AKM, obviously, he played a lot of Soldier 76, and he just absolutely locked people down, kept uh, the Pharahs out of the sky, mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, it was just very, very impressive what this roster was able to do. And really kind of, I mean, it's not a new composition, dive comp, it's, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the thing. It wasn't talked about like this a week ago today. Mm -hmm. You know, people might have tried it a little bit in the, the previous tournaments, but the, the pro scene's been on a bit of a break, and what these guys have been doing is figuring out that dive cop's the way to go in this meta game, and it's really stole the show, and, and if you have been sick of three and four tank meta games, this is the event to watch uh, for sure, because you will see almost none of it. Yeah, and there's at least there's at least one other reason to watch this event, and uh, we've got the clip <laughs> of um, Hammers uh, Hammers Esports bullying. I believe this is in the uh, uh, the semifinals. This is uh, Hammers Esports bullying complexity at their spawn on Hollywood, and uh, this is to, to to set the stage here. This is after their their spawn camping, and Super from Hammers Esports is just going completely ham on the entire team of Complexity. So, and this is what ZP and Hex had to say about it. Oh my goodness! It is carnage. The hammer <laughs> soaked in the blood of his enemies. So. <laughs> <laughs> ZP basically saying, uh, you know, blood-soaked hammer from Super, and what what really ties this piece together is the fact that you just hear hexagrams giggling like a schoolgirl in the back. <laughs> so good, um, though. <laughs> my, me, myself and uh, my friend Solus, aka Asian Yoda, who I've referenced on the show a number of times, uh, we're watching this, uh, and. Uh, we were talking about Hammers Esports, and I'm like, I, I was telling Solus about Hammers Esports, and I go, Solus, Super is like the most fun Reinhardt to watch. Like, look, and he, you know, he sees Super just like w swinging the hammer around. And I go, yeah, he never, he never uses his shield at all. He's just swinging the hammer constantly. And he goes, what did you expect? They're not called Shield Esports. <laughs> uh, so good. Um, but yeah, so this is this is kind of um, you know obviously hammers didn't win the win the event, um, but I, I think this is not just necessarily the story of Rogue. Like yes, Rogue is back and Rogue is strong. That's awesome. I have a Rogue jersey. Um, so obviously, Did you burn it. I thought you burned it. Nope, it came oh. back to life. It was it was <laughs> it was apparently made from phoenix feathers and it came back. Um, but, uh, so yeah, Rogue's back. Rogue is, you know, NA now. That, let's, let's, let's chalk it up to that. Rogue is an NA team un unbeatable. But, um, you know, I think this is really like, you know, I think we're past the point of like hammers being like a, a, a flash in the pan, right? Like we, we saw them win their first two, I believe, their first two tournaments they played, maybe three. They just won uh, in dominant fashion. Um, and, one of them was an Alienware monthly melee, so I, I think I think you're 100 percent correct. They're they're definitely out of the flash in the pan category. This is a new meta. This is a completely different environment, mm -hmm. and they repeated into the grand finals. They may not have won it, but you're not going to do that every time. We don't expect mm -hmm. a team to do that every time anymore. Unless, I don't even know if I expect envious. Envy to right. I, I don't even expect Envious to come back and do that in NA anymore. You know, next week if they're if they're back next week, whenever they get back. Yeah. I don't expect them to just run away with it. You know, to be one of the best, absolutely. To be the favorites, yeah, probably. But to just have it locked up like that, that's not a mm -hmm. thing anymore that, that teams can really hope to have. Yep. I think I agree completely. Gone are the days of the old envy. Gone are the days of the Twinston Cloud Nine. Gone are the days of I guess that's about it. Um, these these dynasty teams that are just like, yeah, we won 50, 58 matches in a row. I think the the field has leveled up enough. Um, we've expanded the field. The the rosters are changing enough. Like we're we're getting team cohesion now. Where like, yeah, you know, it, it's not like the 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 person who is watching uh, Overwatch esports like for the first time. Or they're just looking at the results every like couple of weeks. They're gonna sure they're gonna be like, oh, Rogue won. You know, Rogue is uh, Rogue is great. Hammers. Oh, they got second. Like, who cares about second? It's like, well, when you see they got 
first here, first here, second here, second here, fourth. And they've like top four at least every single event they've been in since they became hammers. Like, yeah, that speaks more volumes than just winning one event. Um at least to the you know the the grinders like us who are are you know following <laughs> for every single match ever played, and we do have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt because we do have Meta Athena over in Korea, literally halfway to the yeah. <laughs> to the envious envious streak. So I mean, we'll see. I, it just it doesn't feel like that anymore. You know, even the even the best teams, I never think they've got it in the bag. I I would still. Um, I, I couldn't put a lot of money down on Meta Athena if they played against Envious in the first round of the top. Like if they picked them as their opponent went into it, like I, I would still think Envy has a really, really good opportunity to mm-hmm. take that down, even despite the recent results. So, uh, but we'll have to see. I mean, that's they're the team to watch because they're the ones that have the opportunity to do it uh, first, at least. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I think I think we can definitely say Hammers has leveled up to the point where they're like a top NA team now. It's just going to be interesting to see. And, you know, we've talked about this for a number of weeks. I want to see where these, you know, I I would call them like new regime NA teams, the Immortals, the Renegades, the Hammers, the, um, uh, well, I guess that's about it for these tournaments, at least those three, like are the like new regime top of NA I want to see where they stack up against, you know, the rest of the world and the old regime, the the Cloud Nines, the uh, Envious, um, I guess now Rogue, Rogue, who knows where Rogue is? They're like part old regime, part new regime. Like who knows? Like it, it, it's very interesting to see all these uh, these new tournaments happening, these new clashes, these new everything. Everything's great about Overwatch esports. It's amazing. How could you not be watching it? <laughs> And I think that, I mean, that kind of pans out. I'll just kind of move us right into talking about the team comps a little bit, what heroes have been seeing play. Uh, Absolutely at the top of the charts is Lucio and Playtime. Uh, We've said it before. We said it again (laughs) until somebody affects everybody's speed across across all the team. uh, You know, he's going to remain there. Uh, Anna comes in number two, underneath 70% Playtime. So that gives you an idea. Zenyatta was back. He was Mm -hmm definitely a thing in this tournament um also i mean there was a non-zero amount of well it was pretty close to zero amount of symmetra and mercy so um also i mean there was one support at times it really was a crazy weekend if you didn't watch much of the tournament make sure you do uh, anna and genji and tracer really all kind of come in in a lump here and they make up the 65 to 70 percent bracket Mm -hmm. and really it spoke to like i said dive comp everywhere anna is still phenomenal wins every 1v1 that you can imagine is still people's kind of go-to support that's what their their team comps are built for um we might see more of them move to zenyatta but for the time being anna is definitely not going anywhere so if you're an anime and you can hold tight for sure uh winston is the next one i told you it gets weird um (laughs) like the number one tank to see play in this tournament was winston sorry reinhardt you got unseated like every the least played for the last three months was at the top of the charts so crazy Uh, right led by you know uh just solo tanking uh, in the yeah. dive composition. Usually in dive comp, you see him with Zarya, so the bubble can go on him. Yep. It wasn't a thing in this event. Everybody would played so much backline, it was really hard to burst him down, and they were able to run wild. Nox especially was absolutely phenomenal on one, it this week. One thing I want to point out is that I called Winston being uh, being a good pick like three weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it a little bit too. I mean, he just he felt better recently. Yeah. Everything's opened up in the meta game. Like, I don't mind when a Widowmaker's picked on my team yeah. anymore. Uh, I don't mind when a Sombra's picked on my team anymore. Mm-hmm. May still has spots, but she's fallen off a little bit. Like, things have really, really diversified, and it's been really, really healthy for both the the masses tier of of uh, platinum diamond that mm-hmm. me, that me and you are are in, mm-hmm. and. Um, 
even up into the pro tier, everything's been been really wide open. Uh, the next DPS on our list is Soldier 76. Like I said, there's been a lot of three DPS in this tournament. So that consisted of Genji, Tracer, and Soldier predominantly. Um, somebody's got to protect your healers. Somebody's got to be able to just lay a base, lay down a baseline amount of damage, keep Pharahs out of the sky, stuff like that. Soldier was the target. Uh, a good amount of two tank compositions put Reinhardt at 45%. Uh, there was... A solid amount of Reinhardt Winston going on. It was a little bit weird to see. It's been a while since I've seen that tank combination. Mm -hmm. But when the Reinhardt's there to, to protect the, the Winston, and he doesn't even need to necessarily jump out of the fight in order to get to get some protection yeah. and, and you know stem the, the bleeding that's going on on his health bar, uh, it's really, really important. So it makes a lot of sense there. Zari and Roadhog come in next. These guys are at around 30% here. Um, Reinhardt was at 45%, so it's a steep drop-off mm -hmm. here now. Um, really, I mean, there was some four tank going on, very little, though. Uh, per, really just only at the end, actually. Four tank made up 4.34% of the playtime in this event. Uh, the most played was solo tank so just the reinhardt two healers and three dps that was mm. over half of the play time across all of the teams in this tournament um zenyatta comes in next as the number three healer uh like i said it was you know a lot was unko and rogue kind of leading this charge with the zenyatta as they seem to want to just roll it out every single time um and only switch to the Anna when they were forced to. Most of the other teams, however, did have the Anna. Uh, Farah was played a significant amount, 13%, and Diva came in at 10% as well. McCree at 7 and then it gets really low. So um, not a lot of Symmetra is one thing that I want to note. Widowmaker was not very, very popular either. Torbjorn, who'd been a little bit more popular recently, fell off quite a bit as well, under 1%. And Complexity was in this event, but there was only 2 minutes and 33 seconds of sombra action in the tournament as a whole so they did not want to go back to that well uh, even though it's worked for them in the past and um but i think it was their answer to three and four tank and not necessarily their preferred play style yeah i mean it i it's almost i feel like it's almost safe to say that this is like one I, okay it is safe to say that this is definitely one of the best metas we've ever it's seen yeah it's the only competition for me at least is widowmaker meta uh i really enjoyed the widow fights it was fun to watch uh, i didn't mind saying that too yeah and that that is definitely a thing that we're seeing in this meta game so we get kind of we get that sated some but it's also not quite as dominant for everybody that that hates seeing mm -hmm. it so uh, it's really it seems to be in a really nice nice place right now um, the varying compositions the fact that the only thing that seems consistent is two healers there's you know it's like i'm, I'm looking at it here mm -hmm. yeah it's like one to two percent total play time uh, where teams rolled out with one healer it was very very seldom that that happened and you know everything else the numbers changed from no tank to um to all tanks i mean every single group composition had its representation at some point during the event so it was great to see there was even a triple support comp somebody did it for i don't know 0.02 percent it's on the list <laughs> so it counts yeah it, it, it's just one of those things where it's like you know what makes up a good meta i have to imagine that diversity is probably the biggest thing on most people's lists um, and where I'm, when I'm watching a mat, when I'm watching an envious match, um, obviously these results aren't for the apex tournament, but when I'm watching an envious match in one, one game, I see, um, you know, a Widowmaker Widowmaker battle. And then later in that map, I see, um, you know, McCree and there's a lot of Winston, which I think is fun. It's not just always Reinhardt. I mean, we still see nonstop Lucio, but you know. That I think we just have to live with that at this point. Um, he's like un, um, he's unmovable. But you know, when he's we also get... not objectionable though. Exactly. Either. Like he's, yep. He's just got really pog champy boop moments, and other than that, yeah. you just oh, good sound barrier, and then you completely forget he exists. Like yep. he annoys nobody. Exactly. It it really is like I don't know if you could ask for a hero, a, a better hero to be at the like ninety, what is it, ninety seven percent play rate. I don't think there would be any hero that would be less offensive than Lucio. Um, right. 
But uh, yeah, you know, if I if we can see in in one match we can see seventy six. One match we see, uh, you know, we see Genji Tracer, we see Farah, we see Widow Battles, uh, we see Winston, and then we also still see. Granted, it's it's very niche and only on certain parts of certain maps, but we see um, Envious was running uh, Torbjorn Symmetra on Hollywood. Like they ran the cheese um, at a professional level. Like you know, we're seeing basically everything right now. It's like you know, I have to imagine um, like in a lot of people's minds, this is one of the best the best metas. Uh, ever just from a a viewing standpoint like it's fun to watch different heroes get played like when when it's like when you see a sombra get picked and it's you know legitimate and they're actually running plays around sombra like that's fun for me to watch um and it's like you know diva diva got nerfed and diva sees less play but diva still sees some play um so I'm very happy with where it is. Of course, we're going to be getting a patch probably tomorrow or in podcast land yesterday. Um, yeah, back, background downloaded for me yesterday. They announced that the PTR would be down by now. It, it's down. Um, so it in all for all intents and purposes, it really looks like this is going live. There's no announced changes. Usually if they're going to make a change, they would have put that change on the PTR for at least a couple of days. Just mm-hmm. make sure everything's stable, things or like that. We did hero. not see that. Um, yeah, we're not getting a new hero. <laughs> but, but I think there might be an animation tomorrow or something. Ooh. I mean, it's the beginning of the season. There, It's a big all moment right. for Overwatch. So I think we might get some sort of animation, some official announcement as to who the hero is. I do think the new hero becomes real tomorrow, though obviously it won't be PTR playable. Hopefully that's two weeks away. Uh, But we'll have to wait and see. I'm also becoming more and more convinced it's just Doomfist and we've been trolled. But (laughs) It's um, true. Jeff Kaplan did say it's not who we think it is. He didn't say it's not Doomfist. Right. Um yeah, and I don't know his exact wording on it because I didn't hear the exact quote, but he probably said it won't be who you think it'll be. And then they put out this thing about Effie and yeah. everybody's like, oh, it's not Doomfist. And he's like, ha, ah, it's Doomfist. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Well, There's a lot of ways this could have went down, and I, I'm both trying to keep up on the speculation a little bit so we can talk about it for 30 seconds on the show <laughs> and trying to avoid it completely because it drove me mad with Sombra when the ARG was so bad. So... Um, we'll have to wait and see, but the one thing I wanted to mention is I don't know that we've really looked at the specifics of the PTR patch notes yet, and I don't think we'll have time to today. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, we've, we've put it off for so long. Do we have time today or no? Uh, we've still got some time. We're like, uh, we're like almost at an hour. Okay. Um, I mean, do you want to go over them quick or do we want to wait? Because I still think there's a decent chance. Listen, if you guys haven't seen the videos about how much stupid damage Bastion can take in the PTR, it's like almost unkillable. It's really un- insane. Um, I don't think it's going live like that. I think they are going to sneak some slight changes in. I think it's going to be something like, even if they just made it so that Nano Boost and Ironclad, his new passive, didn't uh-huh. stack... That would just be phenomenal because he's literally oh, unkillable. We talked so about how the- he can he gets nano boosted and he starts. Um, he, he well, you get the the percentage damage reduction from nano boost. Uh-huh. Okay, but Bastion, whenever he's in Sentry or tank configuration, takes thirty five percent less damage. Period. Now, end of sentence. That's just a thing. So oh, when you stacks. combine them, yeah, like there was the one video out. Where they ran every single ultimate in the game against a nano boosted ultimating Bastion. Uh-huh. Okay. One ultimate killed him. Would you like to guess whose it was? Killed him? Uh, yeah. Okay. So my initial thought was Reaper. Not even close. Not even close. Oh, man. Okay. So it's not, it's not Zarya. It's not uh, Reinhardt. You just think big ones. Think of the one-shot kills. Oh, McCree. Nope. His effective HP pool is too high for him to narrow in and focus the dot on him when he is in nano-boosted and uh, tank form. The effective HP pool is too high. The dead eye cancels itself out before he locks in the instant kill. Nope. Not Genji. Nope. I don't know who. Diva? Nope. She didn't do it either. It's Bastion. It's Bastion. (laughs) I 
that's literally uh, another bastion oh yes my God. the bastion without the nano boost ultimate can kill a bastion with a nano boost that is the only one so rip wow. um that's what we're dealing with here and there's another video oh, i saw today crap. um you have basically a mercy and an anna really focusing on the bastion and the guy's I mean, he's a good player, but he's he's just a YouTube guy that makes yeah. analysis videos. He's not a pro. He's a, yeah. you know he's not even a streamer. Um, so he, he's only okay, and 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 he I mean he's just not even shredding people because his aim's not the best in the yeah. world. But like he just he's taking so much damage, and yeah. that's what the point of what he's showing you is. Look at how low I get. I mean, sometimes I drop to thirty five, but then like I you get the um, jar from Anna. Yeah. You get you know, and then you just get whoop, right back up. Um, it's it's insane. It's so much to the point where thinking about it from a team perspective, we're trying to figure out how to crack what we presume to have to presume to be the the instant problem. Yeah. Is that there's a Reinhardt shield El Presidente. And, a Bastion, and that's the ball game. El what Presidente else is back. Possibly do, right? So we're thinking of a one support, two tank, three DPS, which would include me playing Sombra, going from my support role, playing Sombra, mm -hmm. hacking the Reinhardt, mm -hmm. okay? Or in just EMP, obviously, stands mm -hmm. up the Bastion. It does so many great things for you. It's yeah. ridiculous. Um, and just because we ha we don't want to take away a tank to go for the extra um, player because, like, a Zarya shield can save the DPS for that half yeah. a second. You can run a Roadhog to hook the Bastion if all I'm getting mm -hmm. to do is hack and I'm not getting to EMP. I hack the Reinhardt and the Roadhog hooks the Bastion. Mm -hmm. And so we're, like, I mean, almost having to completely change roles on the team because we're presuming so much Bastion is going to come out if he releases in his current form. Mm -hmm. Not even that the pros, I mean, listen, all the dive comp we've been seeing, this is a different conversation. Like, how does Bastion live in a dive comp world when a Genji and a Tracer and a Winston and ever like the, yeah. it, the entire world is jumping on him yeah. and your team doesn't even have a Reinhardt unless you, you yeah. comp for it to, to play the, the Bastion. So I don't even know that he's going to make that big of a splash in the tournament scene. Um, I think he's getting such a drastic buff that people aren't going to be able to answer him right away. So we'll see it in tournaments, but I don't know that it's going to take over uh, the tournament meta like a lot of other things have in the past when they've they've changed them. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But as far as what's going to happen to gold <laughs> gold queuing and silver queuing, um, yeah. it's going to be disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to have to plan for it. And I think, if nothing else, that's going to force them to change it. Is the just absolute train wreck that lower end <laughs> youth are going to be with a bastion that's that's legitimately powerful. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think in the pro in the pro scene that an immovable object can be very good. Um, viable, maybe, maybe they got it to viable, but I don't mm. think broken is going to be a thing for anybody that, that roots, uh, unless they just go way overboard. Right. With it. And obviously they won't do, especially since, you know, we're finally starting to see less Reinhardt. So like, that's the, like, that's the first thing that you think of like, Oh, he can shred the Reinhardt shield. So that's like the number one thing you'd want to do. But like, if you're not even able to do that, like, or you're still able to do it, but you're not, it's not as useful because you're not seeing as much Reinhardt. Like, yeah, the the Bastion comp is is fairly simple. I mean, you run the Anna, you run the Mercy, so that you've got incredible concentrated heals on him. And when he doesn't need it, you've got the damage boost from the Mercy that can help out. You run the Zarya for when the Reinhardt shield goes down, and you run the Bastion or the the Reinhardt just to stand right in front of him. And if any of these pieces die, or if the Bastion dies for whatever reason, just insta res, it, yep. it very well might be might be very very viable yeah uh, good old yeah. good old uh protect the president el presidente yeah i mean it's going to be a whole lot better as like the winston that's got to dive that guy like you you're, you can't get headshot anymore and your headshot box won't be you know won't, won't be the three giant times the blimp. size of your body it won't be the giant blimp it has been in the past um, not that for whatever reason I can't hit a headshot of a Winston to save my life because it sits a little differently on the frame of the body and I, my head can't wrap around that apparently. But I just can't do it because uh, of uh, you know Harambe. I just can't bring myself to do it. Yeah, your aim's bad. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that wasn't true either. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think it'll be best actually if we kind of wait until next week. Um, just know Bastion's going to be really OP. The other things they're going to do, uh, I mean, we can talk about them if you want, but we already did kind of go over um, 
the baseline of what they were when we, we knew what they wanted to do, but we didn't have the specific numbers. So. Yeah. A lot of the other stuff, I think, uh, a, the effect is not going to be as easy to predict and B like it could be just be completely different. So it's, it's almost a moot point. Um, the bastion that's probably going to be big at least for a little while it, it's it's going to be big in terms of people talking about it one way or the other like whether it actually is good or not um is yet mm-hmm. to be determined uh, i think i agree with you that at pro pro level mm, you still have time that's able to snipe the bastion like <laughs> uh like you still have right. good winstons that can 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 jump the the bastion like you could still have Mangachu play Farah. Like the, there's, there's still counters at, at the high level. I do also. Co- agree. Yeah. Coordination and dive comp should mean that a turret can't actually be, you know, uh, format warping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I mean, you know, nano boosting the, the bastion, like that could be pretty powerful. When you hear that happen, just run. Like you, li- I'm, I'm dead serious you your whole team trying their hardest with perfect aim won't do it yeah just I mean, run but you think about how dominant <laughs> beyblade was you know nano uh mm-hmm. nano blossom or whatever you want to call it like that combination was super powerful but you could also very easily kill the reaper if you got a, a jump on him like this seems like the same sort of thing except i think probably does more damage and is harder to kill the the difference is 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 the way it's going to be used right like the bastion ultimate whether you're on offense or you're on defense it won't matter if you're running it you're going to use it when you're initiated on mm-hmm. it's that it, you can't from the top rope bay blade yeah, like you know true. what i mean like that was such a surprise such a uh yeah you did hidden get better move, angles. right Right, and you had the invulnerability to get yourself in the position to do it, and all True. all those things going for getting that that crazy kill factor. And I really think if you're smart, you know, you can panic a bastion into popping his ultimate, and as soon as he does that, the nano blade's coming. Okay, and then mm-hmm. from there, I mean, you just have, I mean, you just have to run. Like you have to bait it out of him, jabated him, and then get <laughs> out as soon as humanly possible. True. Yeah, I mean, that's why I think I agree with you. Pro is not going to be affected too much by it, but, oh, man, I don't even want to think about playing that meta. <laughs> um, I think it's going to bring Sombra around quite a bit. Like, her, her ability yeah, to cool. say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't be in sentry mode. Like, you're in forced recon mode for any number of seconds is a really bad bad news for a bash. It's so funny, too, because he's, he's so bad in the form that we think he needs to have be good in order to to be a viable like Mm -hmm. he needs to be rooted in order to be good but he can't be good if he's rooted is basically my opinion on bastion Mm -hmm. which is is a little bit weird but at the same time i think it i think it does make sense okay definitely definitely look out for bastion the rest of the specifics we will talk about next week when the patch is officially released maybe we'll have some more info on a new hero uh, or at least yeah, a little bit of direction. To my knowledge, to my knowledge, like we can do a lot of the non-tournament stuff next week because I don't know that there's anything other than uh, carbon. the Carbon Series update. So there's also we'll Rival Cade on Tuesday. I think oh, it's okay. the first week of Rival Cade, or yeah, maybe it's and, the first week. They think they do one, and there might be some Apex, but we we kind of gloss over that anyways. Though the, we'll pick it up a little more for the finals, but nothing to my knowledge is coming up. Uh, I'll check the schedule and make sure so I know before we off the air yeah and we'll definitely uh we'll definitely talk about any any new hero stuff in the and also all the changes so um last thing uh wanted to uh do for this week is of course our soldier says this one was brought to us by death blow this week <laughs> so without further ado we'll pass it on over to soldier <coughs> If you think Symmetra is a DPS hero, consider playing Quick Match. <laughs> Death, you want to talk to us about the the onset of, of this one? Um, yeah, everybody thinks Symmetra is a DPS hero, and it drives me crazy. You don't have <laughs> consistent, reliable damage output on Symmetra at all. Dude, you're a long-range beam sniper. It. Oh, man, all the beam snipes, right? Uh, your ultimate, by the way, when you press Q, nobody dies. 
Okay, that's a big <laughs> deal when classifying characters. I understand he doesn't heal, but he doesn't. She doesn't do as much damage as Zenyatta, but Zenyatta is not a DPS because he has a slow trickling healing orb he can put on somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, com Symmetra is about positioning for your team and information like the turrets are about telling or locking down rooms you know you could say nobody's in there i know because there's six turrets around the door and they haven't gone off or died yet um so nobody's in there it you can put them in different corners of the map and know where the approach is because it starts firing and then it dies that's what a symmetra is that's her value it's very hidden I understand every now and then she gets a play of the game because you, you can nano boost the Symmetra and kill the entire team. Like it's possible Attack to deal damage. Symmetra activate. Not the point. And nothing <laughs> tilts me faster than when I'm on defense and I have a teammate go Anna and then I go Symmetra and then somebody goes Mercy and I'm yep. already three quarters of the way to the point because mm -hmm. why wouldn't they wait that long to, mm -hmm. to pick their hero? Um, and then I have to run back because. I'm not ruining my comp game because you think it's Symmetra. Like, I'm going to go switch. And now you've got me playing soldier instead of somebody that knows how to play soldier playing soldier. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to toot my own horn, but if you look on Master Overwatch for last season, my win rate on Symmetra, I know I talked about the, the huge win streak I had, mm -hmm. 70%. Wow. And I think I know what I'm talking about just a little bit on this particular hero. Not in general. Like, <laughs> there's plenty of heroes... <laughs> listen to anybody else but symmetra i will uh, you know i have some knowledge there like i know a little bit of what i'm talking about and how player not a dps character i'm sorry just not yeah it is very very annoying because people don't know how to pick when you pick a symmetra um as as someone who spent a lot of my run up to platinum uh just running the cheese comp with symmetra and torbjorn <laughs> during the triple tank days uh yeah definitely people are like you end up with like three healers and or like people and, and like people don't also don't know how to play symmetra for the most part it's like we have a complete we have the point completely held like we our defenses are great we just got a team kill and the person like someone they pick teleporter when no one's died and no one's dead and no one's even being pressured it's like you, you realize you can just make us unkillable, right? Like you, you make us completely un like, <laughs> it's like, no, but like, let's just do a teleporter in case it's like, <sighs> the, the thing to do is to be like, I'm no longer that flexible with Symmetra anymore. Like I, I used to be the default to dropping shield gen and, uh -huh. and things like that. And it's seldom that I do anymore. And I have to have the Torbjorn in order to do it. And right. I have to have just, I mean, a situation where like they have the Roadhog and they have, if they have like Roadhog Widowmaker and you have a Torbjorn on your team, like, yeah, drop the shield generator. It's going to be great. All these one hit pick mm -hmm. things that these heroes can do, none of them work anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and that's invaluable. So uh, there's definitely still value to be had from that. But what Symmetras need to do is, Oh, the whole team's dead. Like, there's no pressure on us. I'm going to be the mercy with the res, and I'm going to hide. Um, and then mm. when it's needed, I'm just going to throw these orbs from forever away. And then when it's needed, I'm going to find my little corner. I'm going to drop the teleporter, like, after two people have died. And then they get to flood in and, and come right back. And that's way better than them trickling in as they die, you know, and as they spawn. Mm. Like, it's almost better to, hey... You know, if the Reinhardt dies first, hey, wait in the spawn room for a second. I'm finding a spot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost better that he waits and then the two other people that died in that little encounter that they pushed too far on, they come back through together. You know, it, that's that's a better uh, outcome than them coming through one at a time because there's a real chance that they die one at a time. True, 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 true. But I'm I'm merely an attack Symmetra. I, uh, I, I only play her as a DPS, so. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it was me every that, time, but that's why I didn't play with you anymore after <laughs> placements. <laughs> no, that was because we went on like an unprecedented like seven game losing streak. Oh no, it was five. Yeah, that's, I, that's I, why we stopped that day. And then like I haven't seen you on Overwatch, and I don't even know how long. But I know you're playing it because you're right. Like I'll see you on it, but I'm not on it at the time. Like I'm eating dinner, watching a show, and I see Blevins started playing Overwatch. It's been like, oh, yeah. at least like I think two weeks. Um, but season four, I'm gonna I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna do my placements. Obviously, I'm gonna try to get to I'm gonna try to get to diamond this season. Uh, I don't know where I'm gonna start. I'm imagining I'll probably start at like mid gold or high gold, 
um, or maybe even low plat. I could. St- I, I finished at low plat, so I might. I might get placed at low plat. Uh, I want to. Even though you only been out for two weeks, it's a different world than when you left, my friend. I like, believe it's, it, but luckily, it's weird. I would get back in the night like, and, and luck, shake some rest off. Luckily, um, Winston is going to be good, and I've been playing a lot of. I was playing a lot of Winston, um, so I'm. I'm I'm happy about that. But, I'm going to play so much Winston starting tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yep. Although uh, maybe I'll just play Bastion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could be a thing. But um, that's going to be it for the show tonight, everybody. Huge, huge thank you, uh, everyone, for listening. Um, Death, do we have, have any last-minute uh, shout-outs or anything you want to uh, want to throw out there? No, nothing major. Just if you want to get a hold of the show, tweet at us, follow us on Twitter, either myself, the Blevins, or the show itself. All of our social media links are on the website, highnoonpodcast.com. So head over there, check that out. Maybe someday we'll start writing on this, the website again. We had like a solid week and a half of good momentum there. Um, and then like the tournament scene disappeared and everything just holidays happened and everything went dark and we, and we lost it. But hopefully we can get back in the swing of things again soon. Yeah, it only takes a little bit of motivation for us to just start pumping out some articles. So hopefully that will start out soon. But yeah, always can check that out at highnoonpodcast.com. Huge thanks to uh, Matt Reno and Adam Hoek. Um, Adam Hoek, who created the awesome outro song that you're about to hear. Huge thanks to all the patrons. Uh, check out uh, patreon.com slash high noon podcast if you want to support the show you want to be in our awesome exclusive discord and talk about cool stuff and get into arguments about eu versus na every once in a while and talk about the inner workings of overwatch esports and all that cool stuff patreon.com slash high noon podcast um, and you can support the show as well um, i believe that's going to be it guys again thank you so much uh, to everyone for listening and all the patrons and all the fans out there uh, remember to leave an itunes review um, and yeah so for uh, death blow i am the blevins remember guys wait remember, it's high noon got his boots and he put on his hat through the coin away that same day it's in his past and he's not looking back he says finding mine now guides my way he's not good but he sure ain't bad he'll make amends for the sins that he has he says i'll change the world one bullet at a time till i find mine Push show call outs. Let's get someone from Misfits on the show. What what happened, guys? Tell us what happened.